we're going to talk about just how to not get demotivated. I mean, as you're growing your business, what can happen is you will get demotivated, especially in the beginning. And this is one of the things that people really don't like to talk about in terms of just demotivation. Everyone's like, you just get motivated, just get motivated and go do your thing, right? But sometimes people will get demotivated. So what do you do when that happens? Well, how do you make sure it doesn't happen to begin with? So that's what I want to talk about today. Let's see who's hopping on real quick. So what's up, everybody? What's up, Nick? Uh, let's see. Uh, to do. All right. What's up, Maggie? What's up, peeps? What's up, Instagram? All right. So like I said, today we're going to talk about how to not get demotivated. And this is one of the things to where it doesn't really matter how big time you get. It, it can happen. Like it doesn't matter how, how powerful your mindset is. None of that. It can happen in terms of you getting demotivated. So what do you do about it? How do you make sure that you don't just one day you just wake up, you're like, damn it. Now I'm really feel like doing stuff or, or even worse. You're just like, oh, forget this altogether. Right. You just want to give up completely. How do you not get to that point? And so how do you just stay more motivated? How do you avoid burnout? Um, demotivated burnout, same thing really. And so how do you just make sure that you're not burning out as you're growing your business? Because, uh, this happens more often in the beginning, in the beginning, when you're trying to grow, you will naturally get demotivated. Maybe you'll feel like, I don't really feel like it. Nothing's really working. And so you're like, ah, oh, whatever. Right. And, and so you, you have to, you have to develop this mindset of, of, um, just, just knowing how to stay motivated 24 seven. And even with the motivation, I think more in terms of obsession rather than motivation, because obsession is one of the things where it's like an addict. It's, it's one of the things where you can't stop it if you want to. And if you get to the point of obsession, then that's the thing where you have so much momentum in your business, where, like I said, you just can't stop it if you want to. It's like, shoot, I, I can't help it. I'm just obsessed. I can't help but work. Right. Uh, but Today, I really do want to talk about demotivation because, uh, I mean, I, I've had friends and, and like several people that I've talked with, they built big businesses and then bam, just like that burnt out. Right. And it's one of those things where nobody thinks it will happen to them. Like very few people think it will happen to them, or maybe it is happening to you. You're like, how do I get around this? Or how do I stop it? How do I make sure I don't burn out in the long term? So it's one of those things where people don't really think it's going to happen to them, but you never really know. And, and I really started thinking about this stuff when I was, I don't know if I was reading about Andrew Carnegie or watching a video on, on Andrew Carnegie. And he was, uh, he was trying to change politics. Like, I can't remember exactly what he was trying to do, but he was giving money to the president and he, he was like really trying to, to change the, the political nature that he was trying to change the U.S. And then he realized that they were basically making fun of him. They, they were like, oh, this dude's just a, a money machine. He's just giving us money. Uh, they were basically making fun of him. Uh, and it, it's one of those things where people just kind of smile at you in your face, talk behind your back. That's what they were doing to Andrew Carnegie. And in his later years, he literally got depressed, like literally got depressed. And I was thinking like, dang, if that can happen to one of the richest people in the world, like I think at the time he was the richest person in the world. If that can happen to the richest person in the world, billionaire, this guy with insane ambition who built one of the biggest businesses ever, if he can get to the point of where he's depressed, it's like, wow, I mean, that, that can essentially happen to anybody. So you have to be aware of it. You have to like really, really pay attention to it just to make sure it doesn't happen to you. So how do you make sure you don't get demotivated? How do you make sure you, you don't get burnt out when you're trying to build something? That's what we we're going to talk about today. What's up, Alex? Congrats on the gig, Alex. Uh, make sure you guys just keep crushing it. Keep crushing it. Um, so the, the problem is essentially when you're doing something, you feel like at first it's not working. And this is especially true in the beginning. When you're actually trying to build your business in the beginning, you feel like nothing works. And this happens all the time. I remember when, when I was trying to build my entertainment business in the beginning, I'm sitting there cold calling and, uh, I didn't actually cold email in the beginning. I just cold called. And I'm like talking to people and, and nothing was working. I mean, like it, it felt like a week felt like a month and then a, a, a month felt like a year. It's like, dang it, this, this stuff isn't working. Cold calling, who the heck said cold calling works, right? And you feel like nothing is really working. And, and so that's what happened to me in the beginning. And it will happen to you more, more often in the beginning. Think about it like this, right? Imagine life is Mike Tyson. So Mike Tyson, that's life, right? And you are some guy who just wants to get really good at boxing. And your first competitor is Mike Tyson. Like the first person you have to fight is freaking Mike Tyson. 
and you're just starting. You don't know a damn thing about boxing or nothing. You are going to get destroyed. I mean, the dude's going to just every single punch, you're, you're going to get knocked out every single time, right? You're just going to get destroyed. And, and so you have to keep getting up to a point where you just get so good you can eventually beat him. The problem is it's so hard in the beginning, you, you just don't expect it, right? You expect to, in the beginning, you're like, all right, let me, let, I'm going to fight some, some newbie, right? I'm going to fight some, some easy person who, who's, who's just as new as me, right? Before you know it, freaking Mike Tyson's right there. You're like, oh, snaps. And this is why I, I like what his saying is where he says everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And that's the same, that's the same thing with your business. You, you got a plan until you actually execute it. Then you realize, oh, damn, stuff's not working. And you're basically getting punched in the mouth by reality. And, and so you got to understand that your first competitor is Mike Tyson. And until you can actually get really good, until you can beat him, that's when you, you start to get to the point where you're just naturally motivated. You have naturally like all this natural obsession and momentum in your business. But understand your first competitor is Mike Tyson. It's that hard. And so um, y you have to figure out how to overcome this. Otherwise, you're literally going to get destroyed. And so the, the first thing is, um, you got to understand that things not working is part of the game. When you are trying to do something, you're building your business, you're doing anything. Not working is part of the game. It's just failure is part of the game. Now, I'm not like all these, like, uh, who was it? Um, I can't remember which, which guy said it, but he was like, I like to fail. I'm like, hell no, I don't like to fail. Like, psh, hell no. I mean, I... <laughs> I know people say like, oh, yeah, I mean, of course you want to get used to failure because you will fail like over and over, but you shouldn't want to fail. It's a stupid thing. Like, no, nope, why would you ever want to fail? Hell no. I mean, if I could win every single time, I'm going to win every single time. I'm not going to want to fail, but it's inevitable that you're going to fail and you need to understand that's part of the game. So you can't essentially just take it. Uh, you, you can't take it personal. A lot of people, they get demotivated because uh, you feel like you're getting nowhere. That's, that's the start of demotivation. Initially, you're like, all right, you're excited in the beginning. I, I tell all the, the people in the program this. When, when I teach people cold emailing, I'm like, okay, here's what's going to happen to you mentally. Here's what's going to happen. In the beginning, you're going to get excited. You're going to be like, all right, I got this new method to, to get some business. All right, let's go. You're going to get excited in the beginning. Then you're going to start doing it. You're going to start cold email. You're going to start doing the marketing process. And then the results aren't going to happen as fast as you want. You're going to start sending emails. People are going to ignore you. They're going to say no to you. They're going to say, hey, you stupid idiot, take me off your list. All this stuff is going to start happening, right? And, and, and then you're going to say, huh, okay. You're going to start to question it. You're going to start to doubt a little bit. Instead of sending, let's say, 100 emails a day, because in the beginning you were excited. You're like, oh, I'm going to destroy this thing. I'm going to crush this thing, right? You're sending all these emails every single day. You're doing all this business every single day. Oh, I'm going to crush it. And then you realize you're not getting the results that you want, that you expected as fast as you expected them. And you start to slowly doubt and at that point, you back off. And so now instead of sending 100 emails a day, now you start sending 10 emails a day. And you're like, oh, man, maybe there's like something else. Maybe there's a different way. Maybe I should do something else. Maybe instead of cold email, maybe I should create content or maybe I should do something different, right? And so you start to question what you're doing and you back off. You slow down. And so it's almost like imagine you're trying to win a race. And instead of like you going the, the same speed or speeding up, you start to slow down. There's no possible way you're going to win at that point. Absolutely no possible way because you're slowing down. Everybody's going to pass you by. And so that's what happens when, when I tell people with cold email, I'm like, you're going to get excited. You're going to send out all these emails to begin with. Then you're going to get, start to get demotivated because people don't just say yes to begin with. They don't just immediately say, oh yeah, sure. I'll give you a million bucks. They don't do that. Right? So you're going to start to slow down. That only makes it worse. So now it's going to take you even longer to get the end result that you want because you're not doing as much as you should. So instead of you sending 100 emails a day, you, you drop down to 10 emails a day. Now it really doesn't work. Now you're like, ah, damn, this stuff, I mean, what the heck? It's not working. People are really saying no to me, right? And now you get to a point where you just stop altogether. And, you, and at that point, you try to switch to something else. And when you switch to something else, the same thing happens. You're like, all right cold email it didn't work let me switch to content everybody talks about content marketing so now you start producing content or whatever else whatever you switch to let's say you start producing content you're like all right i got a podcast all right let me start doing some audio stuff hey everybody here's how you stay motivated you start producing content right then all of a sudden before you know it 
people aren't actually interacting with your content. You're not getting all the views that you expected with your content. You're like, huh? Once again, the same thing happens. That doubt. You're like, what am I doing wrong? And you start going on YouTube, looking at everything. Like, huh? How do you build a podcast? And uh, and you start to think. You start doubting yourself at this point. You're like, what am I doing wrong? And instead of producing a podcast every day, now you start producing it every other week. And then instead of every other week, you start doing once a month. Then all of a sudden you just stop all together. And that's what happens. That that's you, you have to understand that, um, that's the demotivation process. You have to expect it. So you, you understand, or you have to expect it. So that doesn't happen. Okay. So the reason why people get demotivated is because they feel like they're getting nowhere. That's one of the biggest reasons. And your body starts to feel demotivated, right? This is why I keep telling people work out, right? When you, the reason why I do the thing in the beginning, uh, this in the morning, I do the boxing thing. And then I hop into a cold shower, uh, just instantly is because it gets the body. It feels your body feels energized and you're like, I got to go, go, go. And so you, you can't feel demotivated at that point. Like even if you try, you, you can't, you literally just can't because your body isn't telling you you're demotivated. Your body's like, Oh, I'm, I'm excited. Right. And so when, when you start to, to feel demotivated, you can sense it in your body, which is why when a lot of entrepreneurs keep telling people work out, work out, work out, whether you're doing cardio, actually lifting weights, whatever it is, like when you actually work out, your body just doesn't feel demotivated. And so you, um, you, you have to just make sure that you're very aware of that. That's one of the first things that, that causes the, the demotivation. And it's just like, you feel like you're getting nowhere. Then what happens is the other part is you're focusing on what's going wrong. And the other day I was watching monsters Inc. Right. And actually I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but here's the thing. A lot of people are focusing on what's going wrong. And if you focus on what's going wrong, your, your focus is just, it's literally wrong. That's why you, you end up getting demotivated. And so you're, you're sitting there thinking, oh, it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. And so by focusing on that thing, you, you literally, you literally make it happen. It's like that self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like, if you're selling a program, you're like, ah, oh, damn it. Only one person bought. It's like, ah, oh, man, only one person bought my program. Oh man, dang it. Right. Whereas um, let's say uh, Monsters Inc. Right. Let, let me show you guys uh, this thing from Monsters Inc. I thought it was like one of the funniest scenes. Uh, let's see. So if you guys haven't seen Monster Inc., Monsters Inc., watch it. It's a funny story. So in Monsters Inc., what happens is, and by the way, if you haven't seen it at all, basically it's these monsters who scare kids. And by scaring the kids, that powers their, their entire city. Uh, because the screams get put into this package thing and the screams are basically the electricity. So these monsters have to scare the kids. And there's these two main monsters in, in the movie. There's this big monster who's really scary. And then there's a small monster who's, who's not scary at all. And so, uh, the small monster, he's like the motivator guy though. He, he's like the, the motivator. And so the small monster, uh, he's like, um, he's like, all right guys, uh, what's the guy's, the big guy's name, uh, Sully or whatever. But the, the small guy, he, he's like, all right, let's sit down. The commercial's about to be on. I'm, I'm in the commercial. I'm in the commercial. Come on. I'm in this commercial. Let's, let's watch it. So they sit down together. The commercial pops up monsters incorporated. If, if you need your screams and all that. And so uh, this commercial popping up, he's like, Oh, there's, there's Sarah. Oh, 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 there's John. Oh, there's you, Sully. And he's, he's seeing all his friends that he's pointing out, right? He's waiting for him to pop into the commercial. And then when his, his part comes into the commercial, it's a brief second, like not even a second, like probably half a second. And then the logo covers his face. So you just see his body and the logo is covering his face. Like, let me, let me show you the, the picture of it uh, for those of you here. So like, if you guys, whoops, yeah, there we go. So if you guys can see this picture, you see like the, the logo actually covers his, his entire body, right? So it just covers his entire body. And so the, the friend, he looks over, he's like, oh, and he's like, oh, but the, the, the mic guy, the, the, the guy whose, whose face was covered, he's like, I can't believe it. I was in a commercial. I was in it. And he like flips out, even though it was like half a second, right? He just flips out. And I thought it was one of the funniest parts of the movie. And and the same happens at the end of the movie as well, to where uh, at the end he's the magazine. He's like in a magazine with his buddy and the, the barcode covers his face and they, they get the magazine, they open it up and the girl looks at it and she's like, oh, 
I'm sorry. And and then he's like, I can't believe it. I'm on the front cover of a magazine. And he's like flipping out, right? Whereas most people, they'd be like, what the hell, man? I, they covered my face. Like most people would do that. His focus was very different than everybody else. His focus was just, he was just happy to be in the freaking magazine, in the, in the movie, in the commercial, right? He was just happy for that one split second. Whereas most people, they'd be like, ah, oh, man, dang it. And, and so I thought that was one of the, the funniest parts of the movie. And it's, it's actually very true in reality. It's one of the reasons why people get demotivated because they're focusing on what's going wrong instead of what's going right. Whereas that, that monster, the, the Mike, the monster, he was just focused on the split second. He was in the actual commercial and just the fact that he was technically in the magazine. Like he didn't really care that he was covered up or anything like that. His focus was very different. And so when you get demotivated, the reason why you're getting demotivated is because you're focusing on all the things that are going wrong. And this is actually, um, what has to happen is you have to become numb to things going wrong because it's inevitable. It's inevitable that things are going to go wrong. Things are going to fail. You have to become numb to it. And I think the, the only reason I became numb to it is because it happened to me so many times. Actually, that's the only way you become numb to failure is it just happens to you so many times you damn near expect it. And this is one of the things that, uh, motivational books won't, won't really tell you, but if you talk with anyone who's extremely successful, in fact, the more successful they are, the, the more money someone makes, the more they're, they're almost damn near cynical, almost to the point where they literally expect failure to happen because they've just gotten used to it. Right. And so in the beginning, um, what would happen is when I was doing restaurant magic, I had to go on a bus because I, I was just a kid at the, at the point. I would go on a bus and I would kind of do door knocking. I mean, not really door knocking, but I would go, go on a bus. I'd go to restaurants and I'd talk to the GM at this restaurant and then they'd say no. I'd go on the bus to another restaurant, talk to the GM at this restaurant. They'd say no. And I'd kept talking to all these, these GMs. And it got to a point where everyone, like a lot of people kept saying no. I think I even ran out of restaurants in Colorado Springs to talk to because I talked to so many of them. Um, I just kind of ran out of a, a lot of them to, to really talk to. And that combined with all the other things that, that weren't happening, that essentially it, it got you, it got me to a point where I started to become numb to it. I mean, in the beginning it hurts. You're like, damn it. What the hell? And naturally you start to doubt yourself. Like, what am I doing wrong? Like what, what the hell? I mean, I'm freaking approaching these GMs. I'm pitching myself. What the hell? What's, what's not working. Right. And you start to slow down. And, and so, uh, that would happen. Um, oh, selling tickets to my own show. So a lot of people don't know this, uh, back in the Colorado Springs, I actually tried to produce my, my own show a, as an entertainer. Right. And so I had to hook up at this, at this, uh, hotel, the, the Antlers Hilton. And basically they gave me a huge, huge discount on the, on this suite, like their, their biggest suite to where I was going to do my own show. And I thought to myself, okay, I want to do at least two shows, but I was thinking like three, if I can get like all the people. So I'd be able to fit 50 people in a room. I'd be able to do a show at 7 PM, another show at 9 PM, or I think maybe it was 6 PM, 8 PM, whatever. I was going to do two shows at least. And if I had to, I was going to do a third show, right? Here's me thinking big, right? I'm like, shoot, I'm, I'm going to do several shows. And I did this because of the connections I also had in Colorado Springs. I could get on the radio at any point. I could get on TV. So I was like, all right. And then on top of that, I was thinking, you know what? I mean, the people at the, the Hilton, they, they would let me promote as well. I'm doing all these restaurants. So whenever I perform for people, I would pitch every single one of them. Instead of me working for tips at the restaurants, I'd be like, hey, man, if you want to come to my show, it's going to be 50 bucks a ticket or whatever. I think I was charging 50 bucks a ticket. I was like, all right, it's going to be X amount for the ticket because they just saw me perform. So they know, oh, man, this kid's amazing. Right. And I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be really easy to sell at least 100 tickets. Like the amount of people I'm going to be in front of, I'll be able to get on the radio all the time, TV. I mean, all the restaurants I'm doing, I'm like, oh, I, I'm going to freaking, I'll be able to sell this thing out in two days if I want. Right. Oh man. That was, so, I, man, it was the furthest thing from the truth. I mean, I got on the radio, like, like I said, I, I could get on the radio whenever I wanted. So I got on the radio, just called them up. Hey man, can I come on the radio? Yeah, sure. Why not? So I got on the radio, did my thing, pitched the show and bam, no sales. Right. 
<laughs> go on the radio again. I'll pitch the show, bam, no sales. Like, what the hell? Go on TV, pitch the, the show, no sales. Go on TV again, pitch the show, no sales. Go on TV again, pitch the show, no sales. Go on the radio again, pitch the show, no sales. I'm like, okay, what the hell? Um, so then I start, uh, start doing the restaurants. Well, as I'm doing the restaurants, I'm performing. People are excited, like, yeah, man, I got a show. It's going to be, there's 7 p.m., there's the, the 9 p.m. show. You can get tickets to either one. You're like, oh, no, not, not right now, and that sort of thing. I sold a couple. And so a few, a few tickets I, I sold, but it got to a point where I didn't have, I didn't sell enough tickets for both shows, despite me being able to get on TV, being able to do the radio. I, I just didn't sell enough tickets for both shows. So I had to actually combine the, the two shows into one show. And, and then I kind of filled up the, the room. There was maybe about, I don't know, 40, or no, it was actually a full room. So it was, it was 50 in the room. Uh, and, and then a lot of them were actually my friends as well too. So um, and so at that point I was like, damn, what the hell? Like I could have focused on, oh man, I, I didn't really sell a lot of tickets and all that, uh, it, which I kind of did. I was like, what the fuck? Like all, all the friends that tell you they're going to show up, none of them really showed up. And in that case, I for damn sure paid attention to who showed up. I was like, okay, all right. Okay, cool, cool. All right. You so-called friends who say you're going to show up. Okay. Mother. And so I, I sh for sure did that as well. Uh, but that that combined with the restaurants and once again the cold email or cold calling at first cold calling i sucked at it i'm calling all these companies nobody's really paying attention i'm like oh this thing isn't working i'm calling everybody i mean i it, it freaking sucked i'm sending out these promo packets because at the time it, it was like um you you would create a promo packet so I created a promo pack. I would send these out. I wasn't really getting gigs. Then I switched to cold email because it was more effective. Like I could get through more. But once again, I'm sending out so many emails. Eventually, the cold email thing started working. But in the beginning, it didn't. And so once again, uh, it was just I became numb to failure. And when you become numb to failure, you're more likely to succeed because it's almost like you expect things to not go out, like you expect things to not work at first. And through that expectation, you keep working. And then eventually you figure out how to make it work, which is what I did with like the cold call and cold emailing. When I cold called, didn't work. I'm like, all right, this thing is not really working. So I cold emailing, cold emailed. That didn't really work at first. I then got it to work, right? And I just became numb to it. The same with the online business. I started the whole online stuff. Um, with the, the online, I, I would do webinars, didn't work just flat out did it. Uh, product launches. Everyone's like, I made a million dollars with the product launch in 30 minutes. And Oh, I made 500,000 with a product launch in 20 minutes. I'm like, shoot, let me do a product launch. Right. I created the product launch exactly how they told me to lay it out. I'm like, all right, so you do this, do that, do this, do that. I literally created the exact same way. Didn't work. I was like, Oh, what the hell? And then a friend of mine, he was like, Oh, here's my product launch. Right. I literally duplicated his product launch, the exact same title, everything did that didn't work. I'm like, like mother. F and so it just got to a point where everything I kept doing didn't work. So I became numb to failure. And so you have to get to that point where you, you do so much that you're going to become numb to failure until you figure out what actually works. And so the, the, if you don't do that, you're going to end up getting demotivated because you're going to focus on the failures too much instead of focusing on actually what it is you're, you're trying to accomplish. So just make sure that your focus isn't small. So a lot of people, the reason why they get demotivated and they, they burn out is because their focus is too small. They're focusing on the day to day instead of the, the overall vision, the overall mission, right? They're thinking like, oh man, I, I got a podcast and only two people listen to the podcast. Oh man. So they're focusing on the day to day rather than the overall uh, mission of what they're trying to accomplish. So if your focus is too small, it will naturally demotivate you because you won't be able to accomplish big things in terms of just focusing on the, the day to day where you're just like, uh, well, you accomplish big things by focusing on day to day. But basically, if you focus on the day to day, you won't get the big results in that day. You're not going to make a million dollars in 10 or in 24 hours just like that when you start. Instead, what happens is the whole 10 years, you do something for 10 years, you built up, let's say, a big ass email list. Then one day you make a million dollars in 24 hours. Right. And so that's essentially um, th that's kind of what's what's really happening in terms of getting demotivated. The other process, the, the other reason why people get demotivated is because you're comparing yourself to other people. And, and so when you compare yourself to other people, you don't realize how long it took them. 
You just don't. You don't realize the background. You, you don't realize anything. Like all you see is the end result. You don't see the 10, 20 years of pain and failure they went through before they finally got that one thing to work. It's like what Mark Cuban said. Mark Cuban is like, look, you only need to be right one time. And that, that's the truth. It's like 20 years of you failing at something and then you only need to be right once. That's it. Right one time and then poof, everything just happens from, from that moment on. Um, when you look at other people, uh, you don't really see the reality of their situation. You don't see that they got demotivated. And this is why I tell people, read biographies. Like, read stuff, let's say like Elon Musk, right? Re read biographies. Read his uh, biography. You'll see how the dude damn near went broke. Um, he almost had like a mental breakdown, literally a mental breakdown. When uh, SpaceX was going to fail uh, and Tesla was, was going to fail, like all his companies were going to fail all at once. He almost had a mental breakdown. And and a lot of times we look at all these super successful people and we think that they're like God status. We're like, oh, this person's like, uh, this person just going through through hell and just like, oh my goodness, it, it's like nothing touches them. No, it, it, you don't see what actually happens and, and what's really going on inside of their mind. And these biographies will actually tell you, it, it'll show you what's actually happening. And you'll see that even guys like them will get demotivated at times. And so... You can't, compare, you can't compare yourself to the fantasy. If you compare yourself to the fantasy of Elon Musk or anyone like, like him as this, this insane entrepreneur who can do anything with just the, the drop of, uh, of, a, uh, of a dime or just literally thinking, thinking it into fruition, if you think of yourself like that, if you think of this fantasy, it's just, it's just not how things actually happen. And so when you compare yourself to other people, you only see that one little thing, the one super successful thing that they did instead of all the years it took them to get to that point and all the problems they had that got them to the point where they were successful. So this is why I keep telling people, read biographies. I mean, the the books in terms of like the, the motivational books and all that, it's cool and all, but it doesn't actually show you both sides of the coin and you need to see both sides of the coin, right? You just have to, you just have to do that. And then also people don't realize how long it takes. Um, if people don't see how long something takes, they naturally give up. This is the, this is a combination of a problem with people who buy programs or no people who sell programs. They create offers that are really compelling to where it's like accomplish X in 30 days or in 60 days, 90 days, or whatever. It's like accomplish this thing really fast, pretty much. Nobody ever says you'll be able to accomplish this thing in five years. Nobody says that because it wouldn't sell. It's, it's like nobody says, all right, you'll, you'll build a massive personal brand in 10 years after you buy my program. It just, it wouldn't sell a program. And so because you don't realize how long it takes, you expect it to be quick. And when you expect it to be quick, when it's not, you end up doubting yourself and then giving up. It's like, like uh, I mentioned this in a video a while ago where I said, imagine you're, you're running a marathon. Imagine you don't know you're running a marathon. I think, what is a marathon, like 26 miles or something like that? But imagine you have to run 26 miles, but you don't know that you have to run the 26 miles. Imagine you think all I got to do is run one mile. That's, imagine you think that. So you start running and you're like, okay, let's say you got the Apple Watch. You got a tracker. You're like, all right. Huh, almost coming up on a mile. I don't see the finish line. Huh. And then all of a sudden you, you hit a mile. You're like, does this thing work? Hmm, all right. So you, maybe you run a little bit more because you heard you need to be persistent. You're like, hmm, all right, I'll run a little bit more. So you start running a little bit more. You're like, 1.5 miles. Where's the freaking finish line? And you're looking for the finish line. You're like, what the hell? And you start to slow down at this point. You're like, huh, let me get a drink of water. What the, where's the finish line? And then maybe you go a little bit more. Maybe you hit two miles at this point. You're like, all right, let me, two miles, what the hell? And at this point, you, you will naturally give up because you don't realize it's actually 26 miles instead of where you're on mile two. And so people don't realize how long it takes and how hard it is to actually accomplish what they want. This is why I remember a guy on YouTube, uh, I was talking about cold email and, and, and he said, he's a cold email and doesn't work. I sent four emails in a month and nobody responded. I, I just thought like, wait, did I read that wrong? Did he, did he say four emails in a month? What? 
I was like, of course it doesn't work if you only contact four people in a month. What's wrong with you? And so I wanted to pimp slap the guy, to be honest. I was like, four emails in a month. What's wrong with you, man? Talking about it doesn't work. You didn't contact enough people. I was contacting 100 people a day, and I, I was struggling. 100 people a day, and I was still struggling in the beginning, right? And so the, the same happened when, when I was actually spending money on online advertising. With online ads, I was trying to sell the program, and I was spending money, but I was only spending like $5 a day. And it, it wasn't really selling. And I'm thinking, like, what the hell's wrong? The program's good. What the hell? The, I got the, the nice ad copy. All this stuff is really good. It wasn't until I increased the ad spend that I actually started getting some more sales. So a lot of times, you're just not doing enough. You may be doing the right things. You may even be doing those things right. You're just not doing enough of it. And that's why you aren't where you, you thought you would be. Um, you need to understand that everything contributes to demotivation. There isn't just one thing that, that happens, and then poof, you're, you're demotivated. It, it happens over time. Think about like a story, like storytelling, right? When it comes to storytelling, good stories with the characters – uh, the character is basically everything is built up over time with that character and then the character either gets pissed off or, or whatever happens with, with, with the character. It's all built up over time. It doesn't just happen instantly. That's just not how life works. Instead, everything is built up over time. And, and so you, you need to you need to just be aware of that. Essentially, you should be aware of the problems, but you focus on the solutions. This is where the, the whole focus things come focus thing comes into play. You're aware of the problem. You're like, okay, I'm sending out all these emails or I'm creating all this content, but I mean, for some reason I'm not getting any sales, right? So you're aware of the problem, but that's not where your focus is. Your focus is, all right, how do I generate more sales? How do I generate more sales? And if you realize that's the right thing to do, then you just keep doing more of it. The reason why I was able to do so many cold emails, despite it not working, was because I sat down. I really thought about this. I said, okay, if all I did all day, every day for the rest of my life was cold email, would I book gigs? And the answer was yes. The answer is yes. Even if I do it wrong, even if I, if, if you're like a scammer and you have the stupid email templates and all that, even if you do it wrong, if you contact enough people, it's inevitable. That's why the scammers, that's why they work because I mean, the, the idiots and Nigerian prince and, and all that stuff, they send out so many that it has to work on somebody. And so that's what I, I sat down. And I thought about the cold email and I'm like, okay, if I'm trying to contact people to get hired as a speaker entertainer, even if I do it wrong, if I keep contacting enough, will I get hired? And the answer was yes. And because of that answer, I knew I had to keep going. I knew I had to just keep doing it. That's why I didn't get demotivated despite not getting booked in a week or a month or, or whatever. I think it took about two years for me to actually generate real momentum, mostly because I was figuring out what to do. I didn't really have anyone teach me what to do. So I was just kind of figuring out what to do and how to do it and all that sort of stuff. I was doing most of it wrong for, for most of the time until I got it right. That's when it really started working. But what has to happen is you have to focus on on your overall vision, your overall mission. You have to keep thinking about that nonstop, just nonstop. When you wake up in the morning, take a shower. When you go to sleep, take a shower, whatever it is, you're always thinking about the overall vision, the overall mission of what you're trying to accomplish. This is where the whole, the whole focus comes into play. Just ask yourself, like, what exactly are you, are you trying to accomplish? Um, you need to, uh, basically, you need to imagine what's possible while expecting to go through hell. That's pretty much what has to happen. You, you have to imagine the fantasy while expecting to go through hell. That's literally how you have to think about it. Like, all right, I'm going to build this massive ass business, but to get there, I got to walk through hell. To get there, I got to understand that Mike Tyson is my first opponent. Muhammad Ali is my second opponent. Floyd Mayweather is my third opponent. And, and you, you got to understand that, um, it, 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 Otherwise, it's just like you're uh, you're just going to get demotivated naturally. You you have to understand like, all right, here's the fantasy, here's the vision, but in order to get that, I'm going to have to walk through hell. You, you have to truly get that through your head. You want to think like the military, right? This is my problem with uh, this is my problem with like the law of attraction and that sort of stuff. Is they they only think of one side of the coin. Whereas if you think like the military, you think of everything. You think of all the options, everything that can happen. That's what you're thinking about. You're like, okay, when I start to do this thing, 
here's our, here are the possibilities. Um, the possibility, I mean, I may do this and it doesn't work. And then if this doesn't happen then this, and you're thinking of all that you it's like a branch, right? And so that's how you, that's how you really have to, to think. You basically have to anticipate the bumps to success. That's how you become successful. If you don't anticipate the bumps, then when you, when you hit a bump, you're like, Oh, what the f and then you naturally give up, right? And so you have to anticipate it. It's not negative thinking. Like, I don't understand why people are so afraid to think of failure because it's not negative thinking to think of failure. It is inevitable that you're going to fail. It is inevitable. If, imagine the military actually. Imagine if the military only thought of good outcomes. They're like, all right, everybody. Um, you know what? We are going to go over to, uh, to, to XYZ country. We're going to fight them and we're going to win guys. Hoorah. We're going to win. We're going to do this. Everybody. We're going to just go. I mean, they would instantly, the military would get destroyed every single time. Instead they're like, okay, so when we go over there, here's what we're going to do. Um, if they do this, then we're going to do this. If they send a nuke over, we're going to just destroy them all together. Uh, if they do this. And so they're, they're thinking of every possible outcome. They're anticipating everything. You have to get to that point where you anticipate everything. This is why you always want to hang around other successful people. Think in terms of hanging around super successful people, the more successful, the better, but also understand extremely, extremely successful people won't hang around you unless you are extremely successful as well. Everyone wants to hang up. Everyone wants to go up to the next level. Meaning if you aren't a millionaire right now, it may be hard for you to hang around millionaires because millionaires want to hang around people who are doing multi millions and multi millions millionaires are trying to hang around people who are doing like billions. Right. And so you have to understand that people want to go up. They, they, there's no reason for someone doing 10 million to hang around someone who's only doing 80,000 because the person doing 10 million has nothing. They can't learn anything from this person. The only thing that can happen is they will actually start to adopt this person's horrible mindset and, and then they'll start to think negative and all that sort of stuff. And then they'll start to lower their income and everything like that. Right. And so it's hard to hang around people who are way more successful than you. And so what you do is you do things like you read the biographies, you, you really pay attention to them. You, you watch the YouTube videos of the interviews with these guys and all that. And, and when you can hang around them, um, and when you do hang around them, I can't stress this enough. Even if you don't agree with how they think, don't say it. Shut the f up. I'm telling you right now, if you are around a super successful person and they say something you do not agree with, shut up. Because if you're like, I don't agree with that, they're going to think in their head, who the f is this mother? F That's what they're going to think. Like this, like, I'm way more successful than this idiot. This idiot's trying to tell me how to run my business. Psh, what? And so they're going to instantly close off. They will no longer give you advice. They won't hang around you. Nothing like that. And so you have to learn how to hang around people who are way more successful than you. Whatever you do, get around them because the conversations are very different. The conversations around super successful people usually involve business. Of course, you're talking about just regular things as well, but still the conversations are very different. The mindset is very, very different. And when you start doing that, you naturally start to, to feel more excited. And speaking of excitement, in order to not get demotivated, you have to revisit your urgency as well. So this is like what I mentioned with the, the vision, where you're thinking about the vision, the mission, you have to revisit your, your urgency. You want to think in terms of like, why now? Like what, why do you have to do this thing right now? Because that's, what's going to help you just really get going. Like why now? What a lot of times people, um, they don't accomplish what they want because there's no urgency behind it. For example, let's say like right now, if you're trying to build a brand, your sense of urgency right now should be the fact that Facebook ads are a lot cheaper than, than what they're going to be in two, three years from now. So you need to start thinking like, okay, I'm trying to build my personal brand. I'm trying to sell these programs. I got to hurry up and get to a point where I can spend a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars a day on Facebook ads so I can make as much money as possible before the, the freaking ads are going to cost like 10 bucks a click. Whereas that's exactly what happened with Google ads, right? In the beginning, when Google ads started, they were like 10, 10 cents a click. Now, I mean, you're lucky, you're lucky to get freaking five dollars a click, right? And so, you have to have the sense of urgency. You got to revisit your urgency. Like why now? Why do, why do I got to hurry up? This is why it bothers the hell out of me when people say I got to do X, Y, Z first. I'm like, all right, good luck. 
Like that's, that's literally what I think when people, are like, I got to do this first. Good luck, buddy, because they, they don't have that sense of urgency to actually get, to get what they want. And so to not get demotivated, you have to constantly revisit your urgency, constantly revisit your vision, your mission. And once again, start working out. I can't stress that enough as well. You got to start working out because you get all this oxygen to your brain. You start to think in a more clear way. Uh, you, everything's just more clear. You're, you're just thinking better. You're feeling better. You, you can't, um, I mean, you, you just can't like work out and then just feel demotivated at the same time. You, you just can't, it's, it's just, you literally just can't. And so, um, you need to always focus on the momentum uh, of what it is you're trying to do. You're trying to get the momentum. You're trying to get the speed going in your business. When you start to get that going, you start to become obsessed. And when you become obsessed, it's almost like you become bigger than the environment. So at first, the environment is influencing you. Other people's thoughts, other people's opinions of you, everyone's influencing you. Eventually, you get to a point where you are bigger than the environment. You're like, I'm on a mission to accomplish this thing. I don't care what you think. I just don't care what your opinions are of me. I simply don't care because I'm on a mission to accomplish this thing. Get out of my way. And you become so obsessed that that it's like, um, it's almost like you become bigger than the environment and, and it's hard to get demotivated at that point. You just, you literally just, you're just obsessed at that point. And so, um, you, you want to start building the, the momentum in general. So just, just be aware of the demotivation, the burnout thing. It is possible. So you got to be aware of it and you got to figure out how to actually combat the whole thing just by rewatching this video and do it, doing everything I just said. All right. So let's see. Uh, Glenn said, um, what changed in the cold emails to go from failure to success? Uh, it wasn't any one thing that changed. And this is what, what I want to talk about in terms of success in general. People always say, like, what's your one piece of advice for success? Or what's your one piece of advice for this? There is no such thing as one piece. There is no such thing. It's everything that was built, everything that happened over time, which allowed it to happen. If there is one thing, the one thing would be to get someone to show you what to do. That would be the one thing. That is the one thing that unfortunately I didn't do, but I didn't do it because back then there, there wasn't really anybody teaching it. I mean, at least no good stuff. Everyone's like, get referrals. And so if there is the one thing, it would be you need someone to teach you the stuff because like I said, what happens is, so imagine like the marathon thing, right? Imagine that you know there's 26, or imagine you don't know there's 26 miles that you have to run. So you're running, you hit a mile, you're like, oh, this isn't working. You hit two miles, oh, this isn't working. You start slowing down. On the other hand, imagine you get a coach. Imagine there's a program or something out there, and someone says in the program or the coach or the mentor or whatever, and they say, look, man, you're not running one mile. You're running 26 miles. So at that moment, your entire life just changed. That, that one thing, the one person who just told you you're running 26 miles, you now, your entire life just changed. You're like, oh, okay. So now you're less likely to get demotivated because you understand what's about to happen. Then he's like, okay, as you run, what's going to happen is you can get cramps. And then here's what you got to do for the cramps. And then also you may get blisters. And then here's what you got to do with that, right? But if, if you don't have someone telling you that, you're just going to get blindsided by it. So one, you won't know how long you have to run. Two, you're going to start to get cramps. You're going to be like, oh, what the, f oh man. And you won't know how to actually get around the cramps. You're going to start to get blisters like, oh, damn it. Oh, man. And you're going to start getting blisters. You won't know how to do anything with that. Same goes with cold email and the business in general to where if you're doing it by yourself, all these problems are going to pop up. You, you won't have solutions to them. You just won't. And then you'll, you'll, you'll give up. This is why if there is one thing, it is to actually get help. Because if you don't, it's it's so easy to give up without getting help. I think the, the only reason I probably didn't give up is just because I had nothing else to go back on. Um, I, like I literally, I, I didn't have a job to go back to. Whereas if I had a job, I probably would have gone back to the job. But because I didn't have a job, it was like, well, I have to do, I have to keep going. What else am I going to do, right? So that's probably what happened with me. And that, that's the only thing I, I can think about, all right? But just understand there is no one thing. It was just several things built over time. That's why I keep telling people with the programs, I'm like, everything that was built over time is now in the program. But it, it wasn't any one thing. So let's see. You said uh, a great book called Extraordinary Comebacks. Cool, cool. All right. Must read. All right. Let's see. Rush, Rush Limbaugh was fired seven jobs before he finally made it on the radio. Yep. You said uh, what's missing from the law of attraction is doing. Yep. 
You always keep the goal in front of you. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so that I, I just want to make sure you guys are aware in terms of that's how you essentially don't get demotivated. That's how you avoid burnout. Just just be very aware of it. Um, what, what made me really aware of it was when I heard Andrew Carnegie essentially became depressed. Not essentially. Andrew Carnegie became depressed at the very end of his life because he was trying to change the, the whole world in the political system. And they were basically making fun of him behind his back without him realizing it. And then one day he found out. And he's like, what the hell? And he realized that it wasn't going to happen. And so he just became depressed. And I thought if someone who can build like one of the biggest businesses ever can get depressed, then it could probably happen to you too. And so that's why you have to be really, really aware of it in order for it not to happen to you. And so if you want to avoid uh, burnout, if you want to avoid getting demotivated, you got to understand it. You got to understand or you got to anticipate it for one. And you have to do things like working out to make sure that it doesn't happen to you. You got to make sure you're, you're around the right people to where they naturally motivate you to, to do more, to do better. You got to make sure your focus is right. Um, watch the Monsters, Inc. Watch that, that video. The commercial part is hands down one of the funniest parts, but it is insanely true. You have to do exactly what that, that monster Mike did to where you, you focus on that one little thing, not all the, the bad things. It's very true. Um, and then just understand you got to become numb to things not working. If I, I really wish motivational books would talk more about all the failures because you, you have to become numb to it. When you become numb to it, it's almost like, all right, well, yeah, I expected it, whatever. And then you just keep going anyways. Whereas if you don't become numb to it, when things fail, you, you give up. On the other hand, if you're numb to failure, when things fail, you, you expected it and you keep going. And so that's one of the problems with law of attraction, all these motivational books is they don't really talk about the failure. They're just like, if you envision it, it's going to happen. That's not, that's not how it happens. It, what really happens is you envision it. It's like Mike Tyson. You got a plan. You envision it until you get punched in the mouth. And you're like, oh, sh what the? F and and, then, and that, that's what happens. And just imagine your first competitor is Mike Tyson. Then your second one is Muhammad Ali. And then after that, there's Roy Jones Jr. And then after that's Floyd Mayweather, right? And that, that's how it actually happens. It's not, it's not easy in the beginning. It's harder in the beginning. You're going up like against one of the greatest in the beginning and the dude hits hard, all that sort of stuff. So just keep that in mind. All right, cool. Um, so I guess we are done for today. I will see you guys tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific time. So, I mean, yeah, tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Take care, everybody. Remember, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific time, we're doing all these Facebook Lives. So I'll see you guys 9 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow. See you later, alligator.